Hello everyone, this is Char, and today I'm going to be making a tier list based off the stages I think are likely to get in Splatoon 3. Not necessarily what I want to get in the third game, but what I think we're going to get in the third game. If you enjoy this video and want to see more from me, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And without further ado, let's get into it. So I'm going to start off with this 99% won't happen tier, which is going to be filled with two types of stages. First off is this list of stages, which are basically the Splatoon 1 stages that already got ported to Splatoon 2. I don't think we're we're going to get them for a third time with one exception that I'll get to later. So I'm crossing these off the list immediately. The second two stages I'm going to knock off the bat are Urchin Underpass and The Reef. And this is just because the stage we just got revealed in the trailer has the same kind of bridge middle that these two stages have. So I think it's this game's version of Reef and Urchin. So I don't think these stages are going to happen now that we've seen that stage. Next up is the probably not happening tier. And these are basically the really bad disliked Splatoon 2 stages. So Wahoo World, if you're curious why people don't like this stage, its main gimmick is that the walkway to get to mid is gone for half the stage, aka you don't get to play the game. So I really don't think we're going to get it. Another stage people really don't like is Schellendorf, mostly because of how the glass works and how good it makes ranged weapons on that map. And it's just also very awkward and clunky feeling. And lastly, I'm going to eliminate Skipper Pavilion for reasons I will get into later. I think these stages technically have a chance of happening, but I really don't think we're going to see any of them. They're pretty disliked. And Skipper, I'll get into a bit later. Next up is Gobi, Albacore, and Muscle Forge. Basically, for Albacore and Muscle Forge, I think the stage either heavily favors long range or heavily favors short range. So that's why I don't think we're going to be seeing either of those because it doesn't really allow too much variety in comps. As for Gobi Arena, the stage does not work on any mode that isn't zones. So I really don't think we're going to see it again. This is like the only stage that is really put in here because it just does not work on other modes. I think Gobi might just have a huge problem existing on any kind of moving objective just by the nature of the stage layout. So I don't think we're going to get it. Okay, so 50-50. Stages that I think we have a solid chance of getting. Starfish, Humpback, and Inkblot. These stages kind of have awkward layouts. Humpback tends to be more special spammy. Inkblot only has one real entrance in. I mean, you could go on the flank on low ground, but that's not really great. I don't think any of these stages are bad, but I just don't think they have anything super special about them or are super widely liked. And because there's Splatoon 2 stages, I have to be harsh on them because they're already on the same console. So bringing back any of these stages is just going to be really hard to do unless if it's one of the fan favorites. And joining this tier will be Moray Towers. I do not think this stage should make it back into the third game. I do not think it is a good stage. However, this is the most iconic Splatoon stage. It's in Smash. It's in two Splatoon games. It won a poll in Splatoon 1 on final Splatfest stages. I think there's a decent likelihood we get it again, just because of its iconicness. Like, if you had to pick one stage to be the most iconic Splatoon stage, this is probably going to be your pick. So I, I think it's a decent likelihood we're going to get it in this game, even though I don't really want it to come back, just because of how well known it is. So next up is Solid Chance. Bluefin Depot is here, so for those who haven't played Depot, it's basically a split map, and it's very good for long range. I don't think it's as bad as it is for Albacore, but it does have that problem. Since it's a Splatoon 1 stage, I think it has a far better chance of making it in, but I put it a bit lower than the other stages just because its layout is a bit awkward because the middle is ocean and that back lines are really good on it. Snapper Canal, I think, is one of the best chances in Splatoon 2 purely because it's a very unique type of stage. Like, it's a big stage, but unlike Pit, where some of the sides is barely ever used, every part of this stage is useful. You'll use every kind of location, especially on the other modes. And I think it's a really cool looking stage. I think overall it has a good chance of being in the next game. And finally, we have Mansa because a ship themed map is the most unique theme we really had for Splatoon 2. And I think it stands out from the Splatoon 1 maps as well. It's really good looking. It's a solid stage. I think there is a good chance we get the stage in Splatoon 3. All right, everyone, here we go. Salt spray rig, solid chance. So, for those who have not played Splatoon 1, this is the worst stage Splatoon has ever had. Nintendo literally banned it in Tower Control and Rainmaker in Splatoon 1. It is notorious for being terrible. It is another mirrored layout. 
so one side kind of has peaking advantage. And uh, the stage has so much room at the top of it that you can still only access from one direction to where lockouts are absolute hell because the defending team of zone can always just get specials at the top. The stage kind of works in turf war, but that's about it. So with that all being said, why exactly do I have it here? Because Splatoon 3's theme is chaos and Salt Spray is chaos, the stage. Like if there's any stage they're gonna bring to make that theme, it's gonna be Salt Spray. The other bad Splatoon 1 maps, Fort Mackerel, Walleye Warehouse, Arowana Mall, they're just bad. There's nothing special or fun about them at all. Salt Spray is just funny. It's like watching a movie that's so terrible that you actually kind of enjoy it. That is what Salt Spray is. I think it fits the theme, and I think it'd be hilarious. It's like putting Piranha Plant in Smash. Like, it's so funny and stupid that it actually kind of works for the game. So, do I want Salt Spray in Splatoon 3? Initially, no. After thinking about how much it would fit the theme, yes. I don't have to deal with this in comp. If the Sage is bad, they're just gonna ban it. So, I don't have to deal with it. I think it'd be hilarious. I think it has a good chance of making the game. Hate to say it, but it's true. And finally, these are the stages I'm going to predict will be in Splatoon 3, 100%. First of all, Flounder Heights. Flounder Heights is a very unique emphasis on verticality stage that's based around apartments. We have seen the same apartment background that's in this stage in the new stage we saw in the trailer. So I think it really makes a lot of sense to add Flounder as well. It's a really light stage that's very unique. It doesn't completely alienate long range. It would be really good for a lot of the Splatoon weapons like the Explosher. I think it would fit very well in the third game and it's super unique. Definitely gonna be in the game. Okay, next up, Hammerhead Bridge. Hammerhead Bridge is a stage that was made to not be in Splatoon 1. In Splatoon 1, brushes couldn't roll on great. Same for rollers without losing their speed. In this game, they can. In this game, we have dualies that can take advantage of greats. The weapons that have been introduced and the changes to mechanics we've seen have made a lot more weapons actually work on greats. On top of that, the stage layout has plenty of movement options and plenty of ways to access it. You do not need to go across the bridge. If you want to go from the sides, those perfectly work too. There are flank routes that do not depend on the grades themselves. The only mode that might have a problem with this is Rainmaker, but you know what? If there's one mode where people want to run some run speed, whatever. It's different. Next up is Mahi Mahi Resort, and this is basically another reason that Albacore is so low. Mahi Mahi is the very same theme, but done way better. The stage has a much more unique gimmick where the water level drops after the points go to a certain way, or if enough time passes, which is super cool and the best stage gimmick we have ever had. Rather than Wahoo World, where it takes away some of the stage, this literally just gives you more stage to work with. Short range can struggle there a little bit, but not too badly. It has the best gimmick out of any Splatoon stage, its theme looks great. If they're bringing back Museum, we have to get Mahi. Finally is Mako Mart and Sturgeon Shipyard. These are the best Splatoon 2 maps. They work for long, short, and mid-range. They have good themes. They have good layouts. There's plenty of options to approach the stage from. They work fine on all of the modes. If there's any stages we're getting from Splatoon 2, it's going to be these two. And that's the list, the stages I think we're likely to get in Splatoon 3. Be sure to let me know what you think, subscribe if you enjoy it, and I will see you all in a future video.